Hello again. So here we are now into uh, maybe the last video for this uh, for this problem. We'll see how it goes. So we've uh, we've obtained our estimated regression equation. We've done our hypothesis testing and interval estimates for individual parameters. Now we'll go through the ANOVA table and uh, finish off with some of these regression statistics uh, as our last little bit. Oh, and then we still have yet to do actually. Uh, part B here, which is this prediction interval. So we'll uh, maybe get around to that too. Uh, okay, so what do we need? Well, we've got here, we have our degrees of freedom from a previous exercise. And here we've got sum of squares. So I think probably the most obvious next step here is to fill in the mean squared error. Because all of these, if you recall from the ANOVA exercises that we've done so many of in module 13, well, the mean squared error is just the sum of squared error divided by its degrees of freedom, which is n minus k. Mean square regression, this is sum of squares due to regression, divided by k minus 1. So for MSE, well, this one, it was given to us, this 8.89, divided by, excuse me, its degrees of freedom is 3. So for this one, this is probably the easiest calculation of this exercise. 889 divided by 3, so I have 2.96 uh, for our mean squared error. Okay, so that's good. Now, what can we do next? So, we can't do much more in that ANOVA because we, we're missing uh, some information uh, to calculate sum of squares regression and mean squared regression. But what we do have that relates these things together is we do have up here an R squared. And so that R squared is 0.83 and so what that means is you know this is a measure of goodness of fit so this means that our regression explains 83 percent of the variation of our dependent variable so price explains 83 percent of the variation uh, of quantity so it's a it's a fairly strong fit now that's fine we should know what it means but we should also know how to use it in this case to fill in what's missing so S, uh, R squared is SSR divided by SST. Usually that's how we would calculate it. Well, that doesn't really help because we don't have SSR and we don't have SST. What we can find though is that it is also calculated as one minus SSE over SST. So in this calculation, it's basically, this is a percentage of SSR of SST. So how much of total variation did we capture with our regression? This, SSE divided by SST, well, this is how much of the total variation in our dependent variable did we fail to explain SSE, random variation. So one minus the percentage of variation that we failed to capture will give us the percentage that we did capture. So in this case, well, we have SSE is given to us, uh, is 8.89. And so now we can solve for SST. So let me just clear some space up a little bit here. So I have 0.83 is equal to 1 minus 8.89 over SST. So let's just rearrange this a little bit. 8.89 over SST is equal to 1 minus, <laughs> minus 0.83. I'm losing it, man. Jeez. Okay, so SST is going to be equal to 8.89 divided by 1 minus 0.83. So SST is finally equal to, let's get our calculator out here. And so 8.89 divided by, that's going to be 0.17. So SST I have is 52.3. 50. 2.3 there now well, we've got a little bit more to work with 
So now we can figure out SSR either using this same calculation right here for SS uh, for that we just used for SSE. So SST now we know is 52.3. So we can solve for that. Oops. SSR is going to be 0.83 times 52.3. So here, 52 times 0.83, so 43.4. Or we could have also taken advantage of this relationship, that SST is SSR plus SSE. And so here we had SST and we had SSE, so we could solve for the other. Okay, so we have all of our sums of squares. Mean square, again, this is SS, the sum of square regression over its degrees of freedom. That denominator is just one. So this is a simple enough calculation, 43.1. Now we can calculate, here's our F statistic. So what is this hypothesis test for? This one, in a simple linear regression, it's absolutely redundant. It doesn't really add any additional well, in fact, it, it really, in absolute, <laughs> it doesn't do anything for us in a simple linear regression. The reason why is that normally, I say normally, if we have more than one independent variable, so if instead of just having price, one independent variable, if we had, and this is what we'll do in module 15, if we have a, a regression that looks like this, where we have let's say three and uh, let's just do the expected value here so if we have three or we have as many independent variables as we want what the F test does is it tests to see that all of those coefficients are simultaneously notice it's just a slope coefficients that they're simultaneously zero or not all are zero so this is generally called a, a hypothesis test on the overall significance of the model. We're testing the simultaneous significance of all of the independent variables. Well, in a simple linear case, well, we don't have beta 3, we don't have beta 2, and so this just degenerates into a beta 1 equal to 0, or not all equal to 0, which is really the same as saying, well, beta 1 is not equal to 0, which, of course, is really exactly the same as what we already did right here when we did that t-test uh, on, on that coefficient. So what we can do here, usually I tell my students you can skip this test uh, on, um, uh, on an exam or on a case study or something like this. You don't have to do it because for a simple linear regression, the f-test is redundant. But in any case, we'll do it just for practice. And there's two ways that you can do it. One, of course, is MSR over MSE. So this is 43.4 divided by 2.96. And so this is going to give us, so we'll just divide that by 2.96. So 14.67. 14.67. Now, the other way that you can do this, and we might have some rounding error in here, so I'm going to keep expectations low. It might not be exactly the same because of our rounding error. Um, is that look, take this uh, take this t statistic here, negative 3.8, and if we just square that, and 3.8 uh, negative, it doesn't matter because we're going to square it. Uh, 14.44. So the only reason why that's not exactly the same as our 1467 is that there's some rounding error. Anytime we have an F statistic with one degree of freedom in the numerator, and let's say Z degrees of freedom in the denominator, this is going to be exactly equal to the T statistic with that same Z degrees of freedom uh, and square it. So we have, you know, there's a direct relationship between these two tests. and one should expect that given that hypothesis is exactly the same uh, as it was when we did the t-test, we had better find exactly the same uh, the same conclusion. So here we go to our F distribution. I have one degree of freedom numerator, three denominator. And so here's uh, three denominator and one in the numerator. And here's, uh, well, oh, sorry, we're not doing critical value. What am I doing? I want to p-value. So that test statistic was 1467. 
1467 is just between these two here, so we're something less than 0.05. So in this case, only due to the limitations of our of our tables do we not see that those p-values in reality are actually exactly the same to every decimal place. Um, so these tests, the f-test and the test on the slope for a simple linear regression are exactly the same. They're perfectly redundant. Okay, sorry, let's move on. That was enough about that. Uh, okay, so we have uh, pretty well almost everything filled in here. Our standard error so our standard error for the regression, this is just the square root of MSE, which we have already obtained. Our MSE is right here, 2.96. So if I take 2.96 and I square root it, 1.72. Oops. 1.72. And finally, that multiple R, uh, this is often called the um, correlation coefficient. It gives us a measure of the the strength of the linear correlation between uh, our two variables. Uh, and it's quite simply just the square root uh, of the R squared. So if I take 0.83 and square root it, I find 0.91. So fairly strong um, correlation. And oh, I made one little mistake. Let me make some room here. That um, correlation coefficient, R, it's actually the sine of b1 and the square root of r squared. So here this is actually a negative. So it's a negative 0.91. So again, it's that measure of linear uh, correlation between our two variables. So here we have a negative correlation uh, and it's quite strong. It's almost negative one. So it's a very strong one goes up, the other goes down. Uh, measure of correlation. So, okay, we've got our table filled. Let's, um, well, we're 12 minutes in. We can quickly put together this prediction interval. And actually, I lied. I'm not going to include the prediction interval in this same video. Uh, the video was just getting too long, so I'm going to splice it, and we're going to start another video just for that prediction interval. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.